Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about generative AI and how artists might be able to fight against it, especially in the wake of many social media platforms beginning to use it without our permission. So let's get started. First, I'm going to say this isn't even the video that I wanted to make this week. I have my layer management video a tutorial on managing layers within Procreate almost done and I planned on finishing and editing it this week, but some information has come out about Meta and its use of AI and how it's training its generative AI that definitely has a huge impact on the artist community. And I think it's something worth talking about. A lot of artists already are posting about it, and I think it's a very important topic. So I wanted to jump in and hopefully provide some insight and some tips on uh, the issue. So first of all, let's tackle what is generative AI. From the Meta webpage about this particular topic, let me quote really quick. Generative artificial intelligence, or generative AI, enables people to quickly create content in new and exciting ways. For example, with generative AI, people can easily create new content like images to share with friends and businesses, can create text responses for questions from their customers. So basically, that is their marketing spiel to make generative AI seem like this fantastic thing. And it is the type of AI that we're seeing all over the place that quote unquote creates things for you, creates video, images, um, stories, text messages, emails, that kind of thing. And it does so by basically iterating over millions and millions and millions of pieces of data that it received, uh, piecing them together and regurgitating like an amalgamation of it. That is an extremely simplified version or explanation of how it works, but that's the biggest concern, especially for artists when it comes to generative AI is up to this point, much of it has been trained on the images of artists that is co that are copyrighted and all of their images are being used without their permission. And of course it is just hoovering up like all images <laughs> all over the internet and just spitting out um, very shitty replicas of styles and artists and things like that. So the problem that we have now with Meta is it is using information contained in posts on its various platforms. That includes images and texts and captions and probably even like comments on the posts and things like that. Pretty much anything that's posted on there publicly, it is using to train its generative AI. And that is a problem when we use social media to share our images with the world or to share whatever our art happens to be with the world. And because it was shared publicly, Meta is using that or treating that as if it is Meta's property and or like it is just free to the public. It is just free game, which is not true. Just because you share something doesn't mean that it is not copyrighted. That would be like saying because you put a movie into movie theaters, it's not yours anymore. It's now public domain. And that's not how copyright works. So there is a little bit of a catch-22 because Meta does have uh, within its terms and conditions, things that you post on its platform, it can basically use. So as of right now, the rules are more in Meta's favor. And that means that it is up to artists to do what they can to try and fight back. So here are a couple of ways that you can do so. First and foremost, and this is going to be very difficult, I am aware, stop using Meta platforms. Or at the very least, use them in very different ways than you have been. First, it says that anything posted publicly for now is what is being used for the generative AI. So if you switch your profile to private and you share any and all posts, whether they be your art or just updates about your life, you share those privately, then they can't be used. Of course, that is a gigantic problem. If you're trying to build your reach or build your audience as an artist, you're probably not going to have a very big following and you're not gonna grow very well if, it, if your account is private. Of course, with the algorithm changes on Instagram recently, I guess that doesn't really matter because your reach as an artist is already crap anyways. So one way that you can do it is switch everything to private. But again, Meta can change the rules at any time and they can, decide that anything posted on their platform, no matter whether it's public or not, is free game. 
and one element of their page, and I will link this page that I'm quoting and reading from down in the description box below, but one thing that is very concerning to me is, quote, even if you don't use our products and services or have an account, we may still process information about you to develop and improve AI at Meta. For example, this could happen if you appear anywhere in an image shared on our products or services by someone who does use them, or if someone mentions information about you in posts or captions that they share on our products and services, end quote. So basically, even if you don't, if you like shut down, nuke all of your accounts on Meta, uh, you could still end up being used in their AI, their generative AI. And this is not just artist images, not just paintings or drawings or whatever. This is also pictures of you, of your family members, your children, just pictures that you took if you're a photographer, professional pictures that you took. This is literally anything that's posted on their platform publicly, even if you didn't consent to your information or your images being shared. So uh, the rules right now are extremely loose if they even exist in the first place. So unfortunately, even just like nuking your uh, meta accounts or setting everything to private isn't going to fully mitigate the problem, especially if you're an artist of any kind who has a decent reach um, and other people are like sharing your art, which back, at, you know, three days ago, I would have said is a fantastic thing. People are sharing your art around and growing your, um, your following. Now, it could actually present a big problem. So the other way that artists, especially visual artists of any kind, whether you're a photographer or a traditional painter or a digital painter, um, if you share pictures of your art online, one thing that you can do is use tools like Glaze or Nightshade. Uh, so both Glaze and Nightshade were created by the same developers, and it's kind of difficult sometimes to work out the difference between them. So basically, at least my understanding, I'm obviously not an expert on it, I again will put the links to both Nightshade and Glaze down below, but the difference between Glaze and Nightshade is Glaze basically puts an overlay over the top of your image before you share it to the internet, make sure you do this. Puts an overlay that's relatively invisible to the naked human eye, but makes it impossible for the AI to read it. So um, images that are sucked up by AI that have glaze put on top of them are useless data. They're basically, it basically rearranges like the pixel information so that it's just a garbled mess. And Nightshade is a more offensive tool, like going on the offense against AI, because if it sucks up images with Nightshade applied to it, it actually poisons the AI. So it makes further information that it gathers skewed. <laughs> so it actually kind of like hurt. I don't know how much damage it does to the AI. I'm sure it's like a cumulative effect, but both of these options are fantastic for using before you upload to anything ever. Um, start putting these things on your images. Another option that is extremely low tech, and I actually suggest that you use in conjunction with either Nightshade or Glaze, is watermarks. And this is something that I have not done up until now. Something that I started doing when generative AI became a bigger thing <laughs> that was like kind of used more and more on the internet uh, was making my signature bigger on my images and making sure that the signature overlapped part of the image so that even if the image was used uh, back before I was using nightshade or glaze even if the image was used that signature would be almost impossible to kind of like get out <laughs> on reworked versions of of my art uh, so it would be obvious to any human who actually cared that the um the image that they're looking at is like a rehashed version of an artist's actual work. But something else that t takes it a step further is putting a watermark over your entire image before you share it. It doesn't have to be something that like completely ruins the picture. It can be something that to the human eye, they only see like a faint little glimmer of, but that in conjunction with either using glaze or nightshade will help that even if uh, AI, you know, uses your image or is training on images of yours, it will help the output be useless to anybody who's trying to use them. So those are the weapons that I'm aware of that we have for fighting against uh, the generative AI tsunami that we have going on and the fact that Meta has made this decision for their platforms. Um, if you do decide to leave the Meta platforms, that's obviously completely valid. I'm honestly thinking about doing that myself. One option that a lot of artists are moving to is Kara, that's C-A-R-A. Again, I will put the link down below and I do want to just make a quick note because one option that a lot of people were going to was Threads, but Threads is owned by Meta. So I know I've seen a lot of posts by artists who either don't know this or don't realize that it's the same thing 
that Threads is basically the same wolf wearing different sheep's clothing. So anything that you post on Threads will get sucked up into the meta generative AI because it's owned by Meta. So if you do decide to go to another platform, whatever that platform is, make sure you know who owns it, who started it, uh, and make sure you read through the terms and conditions, the privacy policy, and if they have, God, hopefully they do, <laughs> if they have a policy specifically for AI. Whether or not they use it, whether or not they allow it, whether or not they are training their own version using content that you post on their platforms. Other than that, if you guys are aware of any other tools that I don't know of, uh, please comment down below. If you have experience with any of the tools that I have mentioned or any insights or questions, please also leave those in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and next video will hopefully be that layer management video that I keep promising, but I will see you in the next one.